China is the world's fastest growing economy, with growth rates averaging 10% over the past 30 years. It's also a global hub for manufacturing and heavy industry, which has been detrimental to the country's water supplies. I'm Dito, and beside me is the Yangtze, the longest river in Asia. Its basin accounts for over a third of China's freshwater resources and 40% of its GDP. The rapid development of the Yangtze has put huge pressure on the river's entire ecosystem, including a very special creature that swims its waters. I've come to the city of Wuhan in Hubei province to meet a man who has spent over 30 years in conservation. Nice to meet you. Thank you're you so welcome. much. You're welcome. I've heard so much about this amazing Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Sure, Professor yes. Wang Ding heads up the Aquatic Animals Research Group at the Institute of Hydrobiology. He says there are only around a thousand Yangtze finless porpoises believed to be left in the wild, making this animal rarer than China's national treasure, the giant panda. The finless porpoise, a species of freshwater dolphin, is only found in the Yangtze and lakes of central China. Good. Good watching you. Smile. Yeah, Not yeah, smile. yes. Always, always yeah. smile. Yeah. But the professor wasn't smiling back in 2006 when the Baiji or Yangtze dolphin, a close cousin of these porpoises, was declared officially extinct. You watched the last of the species, yeah. so to speak. So how did how did you feel about that? What did it mean to you? You know, we have to learn lesson from the extinction of uh, of Baiji. Because if they are gone in the Yangtze River, they are gone anywhere. You cannot find them anywhere else in the world. Mm. And I remember uh, one researcher from the, uh, the States, he was saying, Beijing is no more made in China. Both the Baiji dolphin and the finless porpoise are indicator species for the Yangtze River, which means their health is directly linked to the health of the river. It's underwater ballet. Yes, you're right, yeah. The main purpose of uh, establishing this facility is for doing some research on this species in captivity. We are not only say, trying to save this species, we are trying to help to improve the condition of the Yangtze River. Hey! Hello. They seem so inquisitive and playful. Are yes. they naturally this way? Yes. So everybody, everybody loves them, yeah. Some of the animals have been here for like uh, almost 20 years. It's just like a member of the family, you know. This group is doing well, but in the wild, the numbers continue to decline, and they too could be extinct within a decade. So this was a rare opportunity to get up close and personal. I'm now leaving the traffic jams of Wuhan, or at least I'm trying to, to head southwest to Dongting Lake to see what's threatening the porpoises' habitats and what's being done about it. Dongting Lake, which runs off the Yangtze River, is the second largest freshwater lake in China. Water diverted for farming over the centuries has caused it to shrink to half its original size. The remaining porpoise habitat is now disrupted by sand dredging for concrete, which destroys the lake bed and overfishing impacts on their food supply. I'm meeting with government workers at the Porpoise Protection Station in Yueyang City. They police a lake for illegal fishing. Today, they're out to enforce a summer-long fishing ban that runs for three months each year. Researchers believe that a decline in fish stocks is one of the biggest threats to porpoise populations. Researchers say the fishing ban has started having an effect. In 2014, fish stocks and the number of porpoises cited had stabilized instead of falling. 
So I'm on my way to the Tianezhou Oxbow Lake. Like all Oxbow Lakes, Tianezhou started as a bend in the river. The lake formed when the river was diverted, and the loop became a freestanding body of water that's no longer connected to the river. I met with the head of the WWF Yangtze program, Lei Gang, to find out what's unique about this reserve. So I just came over from Dongting Lake, yeah. uh, where there are some protection efforts uh, yeah. out there. So yeah. how does this Oxbow Lake Reserve yeah. differ from the protection efforts in the wild? Yeah, it's, uh, it's completely different because the Oxbow Lake, uh, the conditions are similar, but the disturbance from human activities like sand dredging, illegal fishing, and also shipping, they all forbidden here. So it's a much safer place for puffins. Oh, it's feeding time. This is what we call rescue fence. So all those injured animals from the river or from the lake, we come here and to, to treat to some treatment. And when they are ready to release and then release into the wild. I see. Yeah. And when did the first porpoises come here? Uh, the first porpoise come here is in the year of 1992. We have four, five of uh, these porpoises put into this area. Now we have 45 to, uh, 40 to 45. And every year we have three to five new babies coming. Lei Gang invites me for a tour of the lake. This is the best place to see the dolphin in the wild in the world. Really, the best yeah, place yeah. in the world? Yeah. Other places will never be guaranteed. Here is guaranteed 100% of the time. Here, yeah, 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 just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bonga over there, over there, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, as I mentioned, this is the best place oh, to see the dolphin. Oh, so many. <laughs> It's a big room anywhere out there. This network of finless porpoise reserves will protect viable populations and maintain the species' overall genetic diversity. I'm saying goodbye to these amazing creatures with conflicted feelings. The threat to their habitat is enormous, but I've met with fantastic people who are bringing real change to their environment. I really do hope more people come to realize not just the plight of the porpoise, but the urgent need to restore the balance between humans and nature all along the Yangtze River. <laughs>